Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guest will be a very special guest, Mr. Marcus Massey. He's the CEO of Gargantuan Entertainment. How you doing there, Mr. Massey? I'm wonderful, man. I'm glad to be here, Mr. Uh, Brown. Thank you for coming on the show, sir. Tell the viewing audience, who is Marcus Massey? Well, Marcus Massey is, first of all, a Charlotte, born and raised native of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, raised in the south side of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, the owner of Gargantuan Films, a uh, visionary, barber, a um, father, loving father. And the um, motto I go by is struggle, change, and prosperity. That's what I live for. Mm -hmm. At one point in your life, you went through a lot. Do you ever think you would be where you are at right now? Well, looking back, I can say no before I, you know, I, I got my got my one on one with God to know who I am today. And I can say yes, because once I got my one on one with God and, and learned my place in life, I knew I would make a huge impact on my, my future from where I was at. So yes, I did know. Who would you consider to be that inspiration in your life? My inspiration would definitely be Christ. Mm. You know, that's, that's the most inspiration for me because where I come from and what I've done in life, uh, that's all I had to reach out to. And that was the only source I reached out to, to, you know, better my life and, and do the things that I'm doing today. Because I know that's, that's where my heart was at. What does it take to be a successful business owner? Well, t today, for me, for me being a successful business owner is for a person to have that drive and, and just be relentless about everything they want to do in life and, and, and stay positive and humble about what they're trying to do. And don't ever let nobody tell them they can't do something that, they, that their heart is set to do. And that's how I live my life, you know, it's about the struggle to change the prosperity because I've been through so much in life that everybody said, you know, you had your naysayer to say, you ain't going to do this and you ain't going to do that. But I'm not in competition to prove them wrong. I just wanted to make sure that Marcus knew who he was as a person and do what I set out to do. And that was to make history. And that's what I'm doing today. Mm. What advice would you give to our youth? Who wants to start a business? I will first of all tell them to get their plan and, and, and just make it plain. Like, you know, I, I try to do mine from a five year vision where I actually put down exactly what I wanted to do, all my goals, admirations, and dreams, and said, I'm going to tackle them one by one without doing a whole lot of, you know, trying to do too much at one time. I set my goals, I attacked them, I executed my study everything that I wanted to do about that business, and I did it. And when I got towards the end of what I wanted to do, that actual part, because where I was at, I was incarcerated when I was doing a lot of my visions. And I wasn't able to attack the last part of my, 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 my goals and my dreams until actually when I got out to have the resources to do what I wanted to do. So I pulled all that together and had all my homework done. And then I executed it when I got out. And when I, when I got out, I did what I wanted to do. And I stayed on top of it. And that's what I would give to, to you know, a young entrepreneur that wants to start their own business and be successful. Is stay on point, stay focused, and go after your dream. You're a film director. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to want to be in that field? Well, while I was incarcerated, I came up with something saying, you know, you know, I wrote the books. I had started writing books and while I was incarcerated, and I, I, I kind of like conquered that. We ended up with 30 books. And I say, you know, when I get out, I want to be able to have the impact to bring each book to a visual because it was different. Correct. You know, I hadn't seen that. You know, a lot of people that make movies make movies. A lot of them don't have novels that they, that they created mm -hmm. from the movie. So I said, you know what, I want to have an impact in a body of work. So when I get out, I didn't want anybody to say, you know, when I approach somebody, it might be somebody successful that say, you know what, I give you two minutes of my time, what, what are you about? 
talk to me. And I, if I can help you, I'll help you. So I wanted to have that body of work already lined up. So when I talk to anybody of any position that could help me, I would already have this done. And I'd be ready, you know, I'm just ready, packaged and ready to go. And that was my, that was the way I did it. You have a movie, mm -hmm. The Come Up. Yes. What inspired you to come up with that movie and how much was, did it take to make that movie? Well, it was a lot of blood, sweat and tears because, you know, the actual movie was founded from the book mm -hmm. that I decided to write in 2005. That was actually the first book of 30 that I started from 2005 to 2007 in my release from incarceration. Mm -hmm. And that book did bestseller, it was a bestseller. Um, I did that book in three weeks. It was, it was a, a journey of my life that I wanted to give back to the youth as a horror story. Okay. You know, I wanted to actually give them like a, a scare tactic to say, you know how the scare scrape programs are? Mm -hmm. I wanted to give it to them in a book to say, you know what? I didn't want them to glorify the violence of that book. I wanted them to read that book and understand that this would come with that game. You know, that type of life in that drug era ain't nothing promised. It's a concrete jungle. It's death and incarceration. And it was a, a modern day horror story. And I wanted to bring that to visual. And, and, and that's what I did. I wanted to bring that to life. We're going to take a break and watch some footage from some of your show right now. Uh, definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Marcus, that was some footage from some of your coming up film. Mm -hmm. Describe that, some of that footage that we just saw. Well, that footage was about uh, me getting ready to be prepared to be released. Uh, but this was when I was incarcerated the first time. Mm -hmm. When my mind wasn't on God, it was just of being corrupt when I got out. You know, it was like the revolving door that that's, you know, that so many of us go through that's been trying to chase after that blood money. And, and that's, that's the part of the, the lesson and the teaching I'm trying to do to show them that that life and how it's so, it's so easy to get suckered up into that, that, that glorifying game to where you won't even have your mind on your life, your own life. You'll actually come out after doing X amount of years 
and go right back into the same revolving door. And that's what that was about. What do you say to the youth that look at this lifestyle, the money, the cars, the, and what do you say to them about that fast money? Well, one thing I would love to say to them, and I always say this when I go out and they always, you know, when I do go to park recs and speak to the kids, you know, the at-risk teens that, that think it's cool and think it's, it's a good thing to glorify, you know, what they see, that it's, it's a mirage. It's fake, it's fictitious, and there's nothing real about it. It's just like how now they won't wear um, uh, the Jordans from people's trunks. You know, kids won't wear that. They'll tell you, that's fake. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the store and get Well, that's what this is. This, 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 that life Correct. is some fake Jordans. That's exactly what it is. It's not authentic. And when they try to reach out for that glitz and glam, they don't understand it. It's a life sentence with it. Or it's York Memorial Park, you know, at the, at the funeral home. Because them the two choices you got. And, and it's, it's not no coming back from it. Once you're in it, you sign an actual contract with Satan saying that anything goes because there ain't nothing promised and ain't nothing nice about no concrete jungle. This is what you entered into and everything goes and ain't no honor among thieves. And they'd have to realize that this is not the way. You know, I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a prime spokesman that God allowed me to make it out of that situation. I took you through a metamorphic stage where he said, I look at it like that, that, that metamorphic stage of a, of a, of a butterfly. You know, yes. having to go in, and, and that's my struggle. And seeing how all the things that I, I caused, now me laying on that bed, that hard bed, was saying, okay, now God gonna show me, okay, he let me, he let me feel it. You know, this is the, the pain that's gonna come from that. If you're fortunate enough to come to prison, you know, instead of getting killed before you got there, you know? Yes, and to be able to have that, that sense of, coming to him and crying out to him say you know I want to change that's the part of my change mm -hmm. and then once you take that that, that struggle and, and and learn from what you're doing and actually want to change mm -hmm. then God gonna let you see the prosperity of it and that's what I went through and that's it took me 13 years of mm -hmm. of jumping in that game working for Satan for all them years to know that it was fake it was a mirage you know it's gonna be days you don't get you know if you're fortunate to go to prison and not get killed in the streets, it's gonna be times where you realize you don't have family. It's gonna be times when you realize that you, you, your family can't come see you because your mom and dad done got too old. Correct. They can't travel them highways. Or you losing family members to, to what you caused before. Because if you hadn't done that, maybe you wouldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so those are all the decisions and choices we make. And life thinking that that game is, is, is everything that they say it is when you see guys riding around with them $100,000 cars, but you're not realizing that he got a car note. You know what I'm saying? He doing anything he can to make that car note. And if he don't make that car note, that glitz and glam, you think he got it, he made it. He really didn't, he hadn't made anything. He just riding a rental car. You know what I'm saying? Sure, so, sure. you know, it's just a lot of food gazing us to it, man. And, and I tell the youth all the time, man, don't, don't go for it because it ain't real. Mm -hmm. When them brothers go home at night, the ones that's not out here getting, getting the real money, because right now it, it, there is no real money in that. You know, They might have a little few false promises and false hopes with the money because it, it buys the little material things for them now, but it don't last long at all. It won't outlast that prison bid, I guarantee you. And that's what I always tell them, you know, don't fall for it. Don't go for it, it's not real. Bag up from it. If you listen to me, because I've been there, and I just pray on your life that you don't, you know, you don't, you don't make those decisions. How much of an impact was your father in your life? Oh well, uh, my father. You know, I was legally adopted by a gentleman named um, Lawrence Master Senior. Uh, that was the best guy I ever met in my life. You know, I have a bi I knew my biological. But, you know, I was raised from Mr. Mike Mass, and he was the best dude I ever met in my life. You know what I mean? The best. And, you know, I owe all my success to him. I always keep his name alive. He passed away in 2001 while I was incarcerated, mm -hmm. which crushed me. You know what I mean? But, okay. you know, God allowed me to say, you know, I said, God, I want to show Dad 
that, you know, I know I messed up when I was out here, but I'm really this person today. And I know he see what I'm doing. So I, everything I do, I keep his name out there, you know, in the dedication section of everything I do between the premiering of my film or the, the acknowledgments in my books. I always keep his name now, right after God.